All right, hey, welcome to HIT. This is Chris Giaconelli, High Intensity Tactics for Growth. And today, I'm gonna talk about sales. And when I talk about sales, I'm gonna talk about this. Your sales suck, probably, because you don't listen. Now, that's not me saying that, that's Daniel Pink. And if you're looking at uh, somebody for a new read, a new book, here's what I tell you from the book, to sell is human, okay? So if you're looking for something, and that's a lot of the times when I'm dealing with salespeople, the first thing I tell them is, are you listening or are you just talking? And nine times out of 10, what I will tell you is they are talking, they are selling, they are pitching, they are constantly interrupting the person that's gonna be buying from them. Now you heard on the other podcast, we talk about this as far as, you know, people aren't buying products anymore. People are buying people. We all, all understand that. We all understand how we need to make sure we're communicating with our body language. We've talked about this all the time as far as how we sell ourselves. But the biggest thing that people aren't doing is they're not freaking listening. People process 25% of what I say because most of the time they're in the mental mall. They're thinking about other things that are going on in their life. This is why when I'm talking to salespeople, I'm saying you need to understand people have so much going on in their world today. There's so many things that are getting processed in that brain. And when you're selling somebody or you're selling a product or you're selling an opportunity to somebody, you've got to stop talking. You've got to let them formalize their thoughts. You've got to make sure that you're not worried about filling dead air. That's what I see so many salespeople today. When the, when the conversation stops and there's a pause in the conversation, they immediately want to go like a vacuum and suck out all the air, meaning they want to just start talking because what they feel is, oh, if I, if there's any dead air, that means they don't want to do the deal. No, what they have to understand is you got to give people time to process. And then once you give them time to process, what you have to understand is listen to what their needs are. It's it's crazy. When you want to strengthen your ability to sell, what you have to understand is that's the listening. And it strengthens a relationship. It builds trust. I think sometimes when people are, are talking too much when they're selling, I think they talk themselves out of a sale because you sound sometimes like a used car salesman. You sound like sometimes like, hey, listen, uh, you know, I, I, I don't, hey, listen, this is a great opportunity. This thing is amazing. You're going to be the best if you ever had it. It's like, slow down. You know, this is listening skills in far as sales is one of the most important things. I'll give you an example. I, this, this young lady was, uh, was working, you know, uh, with me and talking about how she couldn't close the deal and how she couldn't close the deal and somebody joining her business. And I said, okay, well, you know, walk me through your, your sales pitch. And so next thing you know, She's walking me through and she said, well, we have an awesome opportunity. There's so much flexibility with what we do. There's so much opportunity. Um, you know, you, you know, it, I, you know, if you, 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 I'm able to spend more time with my kids, which is amazing. There's so much flexibility with them. I'm able to drop them off at school. I'm able to pick them up from school. I'm able to do homework with them. And I said, is this your sales pitch all of the time? She goes, oh my gosh, it's my sales pitch every time because I'm really thankful for the opportunity that I have, you know, about, you know, going out there. And, and owning my business, but having the flexibility with my children, which I, that's what I got into this for. I said, well, okay, great. So I heard her do an actual pitch. We were working. She had somebody to call. I said, let's three-way this. I want to hear what you're doing. So next thing you know, she goes right into the sales pitch. She met this person at a party. She basically sits down with them, uh, you know, on, on the phone. She's going through her, you know, step by step on how to close somebody. And the first thing I, I thought to myself is she started off the conversation and didn't ask one question about why this person was on the phone with them. Not one. Like what interested them? What were they really wanting to get out of this? What was it that kind of they they thought that they could do with this business? She went right into how the business worked for her and how the business could go out there and provide this flexibility, this lifestyle for her and not one time asking this. So she goes through the whole entire pitch. I'm listening to it. I'm like, oh my gosh. Well, it was a really good pitch until the woman sit back and go, well, what about, you know, how can this business work for me? Cause I don't have kids. Ooh, whole conversation about flexibility with kids, being able to drop them off in the morning, be able to pick them up, be able to do the different stuff. And this woman didn't even have kids. So she spent 20 minutes of her pitch talking about something that didn't even, wasn't even relevant to this woman and relevant to her life. This woman asked the question, how does that work for me? And ultimately I sit there and I said, well, ma'am, can I jump in on this? And she's like, absolutely. 
I said, this is for training purposes because I really want to help this consultant out. I said, man, why are you getting into the business? And she goes, you know what? I'm getting into the business because I actually saw one of our friends that actually was traveling on one of the trips with, with you guys. And I wanted to do this because I have no kids. I have no significant other. I have no dog. I work nine to five and I really don't have any extra money to travel. And I really want to get into this because I want to earn one of the trips. Bingo. Done. All I had to do was sit back and say, tell me what you want out of this. Okay, great. You want a, you want a trip? Well, ma'am, where is it that you'd like to go? Oh, where would I like to go? I, I like to go to Barcelona. I said, well, why Barcelona? She goes, I, you know, there's something about that, the Latin and something about like just the vibe and the, the it's like a carnival all the time. I don't know. I just, I've always wanted to go to Barcelona. I'm like, all right, cool. Where else would you like to go? She goes, you know what? I really, really like Europe. I don't know what it is, but I like to be in Italy. I like Greece. I like all these different places. I said, what would you do, you know, if you go to Italy or Greece? She goes, oh, restaurants. I love going to restaurants. I'm a foodie. A lot of my girlfriends, we get together for, you know, different, you know, food and, and wine. And I just, I just think the whole culture is amazing. I said, so let me ask you this question. What's holding you back from joining the organization and getting you over to, you know, going to Barcelona or going over to uh, Italy or going over to, you know, having these unbelievable experiences or even making extra money that you and your friends could have those unbelievable experiences where you live? And she goes, you know what? I, I don't know what's holding me back. I just, I'm not sure I'm going to be successful with this. And I said, ma'am, what, is, what does success look like to you? She starts talking and, you know, she's like, you know, just to make an extra thousand dollars a month. I'm like, what would you do with that thousand dollars? And all it was, was like a tennis match. It's a conversation. But what I see too many times is people try to answer somebody else's thoughts, wants, beliefs, and that's where we outsell ourselves. We, we literally make our sales suck because all we want to do is talk about ourselves and talk about our products. And we want to oversell, oversell, oversell. And the best salespeople are the best listeners. And I will tell you right now, it's all about that body language. It's all about don't try to feel that dead air when you feel like the conversation has stalled, don't immediately jump in. Sometimes people are processing. Not everybody is like you. And I had to learn that early on because what I would do is as soon as I felt like the air was like everything was quiet, it just threw me. Those are unexperienced salespeople. Unexperienced salespeople, they do not know how to sell because they do not like when it's quiet. They think that they always got to give their like their features and benefits. They always got to feel like they're, they got to make sure that people are, you know, you know, smiling when they're talking, like, is something wrong? Is something okay? You know, you don't look like you're jiving. Sometimes it's just people have RBF. It's okay. They're processing, they're thinking it's okay. Quit thinking about yourself when you're selling. You've got to understand sales. It is a unbelievable technique. And a lot of it is going to be on how we slow it down, how we listen. And if you're in front of somebody, for the love of God, get off your freaking cell, cell phone when you're selling. Your body language is 93% of the clothes, man. You've got to understand that. When you're sitting in front of somebody, they're going to be looking at your face, your eye contact, the way that you're, you're, you're looking at them, the head nods. Now, don't be that like energizer bunny where you're head nodding like so fast at everything they're saying because that's a freaking annoying too. But you want to make sure that you're, you're actually engaged in the conversation. I see too many people that are engaged with their eyes in their phone when they're having a conversation to sell somebody. Are you out of your freaking mind? What are you doing? Your, your, your body is saying to her, yes, I'm in, I'm here to make money from you, but I don't care what you're saying because my phone is more important than this conversation that we're having. So again, making sure you're listening, give people a chance because at the end of the day, you've got to listen 25%, 25% is all you're hearing from your customers because what you're doing also is you're formalizing or formalizing the questions or the responses back to the things they're going to ask you quit you're not going to have all the perfect answers you're just it's it's it look at it this way be authentic be an authentic salesperson don't try to be something that you're not and if you listen and you quit like 
you you know, don't just start thinking as when somebody's talking. I see that a lot when I'm working with somebody. What they're doing is I'm in a conversation, I'm talking to them, and I could tell they have checked out. And as soon as I see them checked out, because what they're doing is they're in their mind formalizing a response back to me, and they haven't even heard the full question. So therefore, they answer about 15 to 25% of what I, my, my one question, I'm like, well, the other 85 to 75%, you've not even come close to. So just make sure that you understand understand that today, if you want to be a unbelievable salesperson, yeah, I know your products. Yeah. Understand everything that you have to, your features, benefits. I'm not saying don't, that is important. It's an important aspect, but if you feel like you're not closing the deal, what you maybe need to do is record yourself next time. Who's talking the most? Is it you? Cause if you're talking the most, your sales will suck. Start listening, start making money, start making some things happen. This is hit high intensity tactics for growth. Remember you You've always had the pen to create your new chapter. Have a great day. Thanks so much for tuning in.